Autophagy is really hot right now, and if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in understanding more about autophagy. So that's what we're gonna talk about, but with an emphasis on exercise. Now you might say, come on, Mike, I know you're biased, you're always talking about exercise, but no, I'm gonna overlay a study that shows the quantification of the autophagy increasing in sedentary people versus athletes. And as you can look at the images that are linked in the study below and overlaid right now, there is a significant increase in autophagy biomarker genes in the muscle tissue in active people who are lean compared to sedentary overweight individuals. Because a lot of people, Deanna, they fast as a means to enhance autophagy. Mm -hmm. Okay, fasting can be very helpful. A lot of people talk about fasting, including ourselves. We've interviewed amazing people like Dr. Jason Fung who espouse the many health benefits of fasting. Right. However, as this study and many other studies have shown, the more physically fit one is, the more benefits they gain from fasting. So I wanna just leave that here and maybe pick your brain a little bit, Deanna, because mm -hmm. Deanna doesn't do any prolonged fasting. No, I don't. Zero. Yeah. And we just had a full diffusion weight imaged MRI looking at her body fat percentage, visceral fat, fat in the liver, fat in the kidneys, which by the way, there was none. Bone mineral density is very high. Red bone marrow was very high. Yeah. But she prioritizes fitness first. I do, I do. So again, fitness meaning consistent fitness and moving all day long. So many people ask me, gosh, do you uh, do a lot of cardio and how often do you train uh, during the week? Well, my cardio looks a lot different now since going OMAD than it did back in my 20s and 30s. I used to be that cardio queen. I used to be, uh, you know, back to my history of being an elite distance runner. I used to clock in 70 miles a week of running, so much stress on the joints. And um, it carried over into my 30s. And uh, I began to notice that not only was I losing lean muscle during the process, but I was getting a lot of tummy from cortisol. I just wasn't looking good. I had brain fog. I was pretty much the typical skinny fat. So uh, I got into the cycle of trying to do more and more and more, which many women, more than men do, and it just made me look worse and more stressed. So I knew I needed to make a change. And this is the beauty about OMAD is it's basically, um, and not just OMAD in general, just reducing your feeding window, is that it gets you into a place where your body is balanced and you find out um, that you don't need to do as much as you think, especially with cardio. But my recommendation to you is that weight training is the key to fat loss, to longevity, and uh, movement in general, doing things that you love, whether it just be walking with the family or paddle boarding or yoga, is icing on the cake because you wanna definitely keep moving because we weren't built to sit like we do at desk jobs every single day. So again, the weight training, and I prioritize it in the book, is number one. And I'm not talking light weights, like three pounders. I'm talking challenging weights. And again, not challenging weights that are going to put you in a place where it's unsafe and create injury. Uh, there is you know, a, a way to do it in that you're loading the muscles to create just enough muscle, and then everything else is just icing on the cake, so. Yeah, very important to, just like when we're talking about these dietary strategies, mm -hmm. to customize the exercises for your unique anatomy. Okay. So everyone's, you know, origin insertion points, everyone's extremities, and literally the physics, because what muscles do is they move bones. That's what muscles do. Mm -hmm. So go check out the podcast we did with Ben Pakulski. We have great interviews coming up with Brett Contreras and other people that have talked about fitness. but. The thing you need to understand is your back length, your hip length, your femur length, your arm length is going to be different. So when you see people that are deadlifting 500 pounds and they look amazing and you can only deadlift maybe less than your body weight and your back hurts, consider what that could be. You know, consider the anatomical differences and that's really not talked about emphasized enough. So while you want to you know, do exercises that you can perform comfortably, you also kind of want to give your body and this is what Deanna talks about in the book a little bit more, you wanna give some inconsistency there in the, in the sense that you're introducing novel stimulus. Right. That novel stimulus is what creates adaptations. Those adaptations manifest in terms of muscle gain or fat loss or increased strength or increased speed. Mm -hmm. So. 
there are many ways to load a muscle safely. Not just one way fits all, you guys. You don't have to be squatting and deadlifting and doing bench press uh, like, you know, strong Sam, okay? Um, if, if it's not comfortable, that is. Um, a mix of compound movements, a mix of isolated uh, movements where you're hitting the muscles, it all is good, it all works. But we also do suggest meeting with a trainer who can watch your form. Form is extremely important, making sure that you have the right range of motion throughout these exercises. Very important, friends. And so on that final closing note, we need to understand that the more physically fit you are, the more benefits you will get from fasting, from autophagy enhancement. There's been many studies that have shown this, and if you don't know it by now, you probably do. Where we burn a lot of fat is within our muscle. One of the tissues that's very metabolically active in the body and that undergoes reprogramming as we become more metabolically flexible through both fasting and exercise is the muscle tissue and the liver. And so we know that exercise kind of enhances that whole process. So that will make things easier. If you exercise before your fast, it will actually get you into the fast quicker because of the various physiological changes, including glycogen depletion, raising glucagon, decreasing insulin, decreasing blood glucose. That's that kind of hormonal recipe that kind of creates this fasting, fat-burning environment that is what you're probably trying to achieve. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, any questions, comments, we'll be following you in the Facebook group. Thanks for tuning in.